Republican and Democratic administrations and Congresses for decades have continually increased federal spending. Change is hard, and it can be painful. That's because we have lots of ideas for great programs that would really help people out. But it's absolutely essential that our spending habits take a 180-degree turn starting right now. Tonight at midnight, the government will shut down if Congress doesn't pass a continuing resolution. This situation can be avoided if decisions are made in the next several hours. The House approved a temporary plan yesterday to fund the government for another week while a longer-term deal was worked out. That plan also funds our military through September. It includes language that Democrats have approved in the past and the President has signed. But the full Senate, all senators, Democrats, and Republicans alike, have not been allowed a chance to vote on it. In the Senate, we don't always agree on every line included in a given bill, and we don't get a chance to vote on every line included in a given bill. But I will venture to say that most of us can agree on some of them. I think we can all agree that a government shutdown is not an outcome that anyone wants. The bottom line is that talk's cheap, and it's time to stop talking about passing a continuing resolution and take action. Yes, and say that I'm especially concerned about our men and women in uniform who are putting their lives on the line for this country. They'll be paid despite the shutdown, but their compensation shouldn't have to be delayed. They don't hesitate to defend this country, and we shouldn't hesitate to return that loyalty. I strongly support efforts to make sure military personnel and their families are paid without delay if the government shuts down. I'm hearing from service members and their families in Wyoming. They're worried about paying their rent, paying their bills, feeding their children. Some have recently been transferred and are dealing with the expense of moving their families across country, or in some cases, back to the United States. They don't know where the back pay will come from and aren't sure what to tell their landlords or their banks. They want and deserve answers. This year, we're going to take in two and two-tenths trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. We're going to spend three and seven-tenths trillion dollars. Imagine if, if you're a person that makes about $67,000 a year, and you spend $100,000 a year, each and every year. Where are you going to get the money? Well, for a while, you could probably borrow it. That's what we've been doing. We're borrowing 40 cents of every dollar that we spend. That's the only way we can stay afloat. 40 cents of every dollar. Let's see, just the interest on what we owe is $616 million a day. A day. We're haggling over $61 billion in cuts. That would fund the government's interest the government's interest for 100 days, a drop in the bucket. But we've got to start sometime, and the best time to start is now.